Hi, my name is Daniel Kofi Abu. I'm a member of uh, ISTF, um, part of the global board. Um, I would attempt to sort of um, take participants through a mobilization of funds. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing um, a lot of um, matters relating to applying for grants. Um, we'll try to examine proposal writing in its entirety. We'll review some proposals and then share some of the best practices in terms of writing proposals. Um, I would be doing this presentation um, with Sheila. Um, she would be doing more of the strategic planning and more of the budgeting aspect of the of the training. Um, you're all welcome. I'll quickly zoom into my presentation. Um, in terms of my presentation outline, I will attempt to address issues of legitimacy and recognition um, within the NGO framework. Um, we would also um, try to look at issues of global funding landscape. Um, and of course, we'll talk about strategic planning and situating them in the global marketplace. And Sheila will deal more of the strategic planning aspect of it. Um, of course, I'll try to uh, address the issue of where the money is and also step-to-step -step, um, approaches on how to assess um, climate finance. And of course, evaluations um, in terms of projects are very critical. Um, I'll talk a little on that. I'll quickly move through the presentation. Um, in the case of Ghana, um, as some of you, I believe some of you are Ghanaians, uh, before a, a business can, can work in its entirety in, to claim legitimacy in the country, first of all, you need to register the business uh, through the registrar journal. And when you register, you are given a certificate known as a certificate of incorporation. Um, subsequently, when you are done with your tax identification and going through the system, you are given what we call the certificate to commence business. And then the business is ready to go. But of course, within our funding landscapes and within the global space for NGOs, you cannot operate in, in, in unity or you can operate in unison. Um, so what I would advise is you have to join allied platforms and associations in Ghana. Uh, we do have um, associations like the Forest Watch Ghana. We do have the Legal Working Group on Forest. And let me also add that the same registration applies to a lot of entities in Nigeria. In Nigeria, there are national authorizing um, organizations and uh, institutions that you have to go through to register um, a corporation or an organization. Um, and I would advise that we sort of get this done if um, it is the first stage of being able to apply for grants. If you are not recognized within the country of operation, I mean, how many NGOs or how many donors will be willing to just throw money at, at a foundation NGO um, in the name of trying to fund the activities without knowing that they are legitimate in the country of operation? In Liberia, I'm aware that you have to go through um, incorporation. But let me mention that um, for chapters, I would advise that it, it's good to, because chapter university chapters so to say because you are affiliated to the university you may not need to go through cooperation and um, incorporation simply because you are affiliated to a mother university and in that sense you can apply for grants through the university um, you can you can have um, some university members as as board of the organization or trustees who would um, support you to be able to apply um, for grants through the university channel um, than getting incorporated um, so I would I would advise that as a first stage of, of going in or going global for fundraising, you will need to get registered, get a certificate of incorporation, get certificate to commence business. I know in our various countries, um, whether you are in Southeast Asia, whether you are watching us from Mexico or wherever you are watching us from all over the world, you need to go through the registration, a formal registration process to be recognized within your national system. This is important. We cannot move ahead if we don't get this thing done. Funding landscape is very slippery. No donor will be willing to invest money in your, in your entity if you don't have recognition, if you are not certified within the country of operation. And being satisfied, one, one thing that I have observed over the years of my practice is that, look, sometimes as a foundation angel, you can't work alone. 
you will need to join forces with other organizations, other bigger organizations, to be able to apply for certain grants within the system. Please, let's endeavor and get our various chapters recognized. Let's endeavor to get them registered. I'll quickly go through the list because I need to do this in, in 15 minutes. Um, in terms of global funding landscape, there are a lot of funding agencies um, that are available. Um, I will attempt to look at the four most, I call them the four gangs, because um, in our part of the world and the part of Africa, these are funds that are very easy to assess. I will attempt to demystify some of them and try to um, relate with them so that uh, together we can start exploring them on their various platform and looking at some of the criteria that we can use to assess some of these grants. So as I just said, in terms of the global um, art space for climate finance, it's, it's for me the most well-funded area in terms of our national space or the world space is finance. It's climate change financing. Um, some people might not agree with me. I mean, of, of late, when it comes to educational sector, it comes to the agri sector, a lot of finance are dwindling. But climate finance seems to become very prominent. And this time around, they are trying to build in a lot of other factors in terms of agri. We have agroforestry, we have tropical forest research. And these are funding that are available. I mean, when you look at, um, in terms of the financing instrument, some of them are targeted at adaptation, others are targeted at uh, mitigation, others are looking at dual benefits. There are some of them that are national in scope. Um, I urge you to, to start exploring some of these. And of course, in terms of numbers, as I just said, in terms of numbers, just in 2020 alone, over $100 billion of climate finance was available for both corporate, private, and governmental institution to assess. And, and for me, when you look at, if you, if you look at what has happened from 2000, from 2000 to currently, even when you look at the figures in 2018, as you can see, um, we had almost about 78.9 billion. And just in 2020, we are hovering over 100 billion. And I know the landscape will continue expanding. We have to strategically position ourselves to make good use of some of these funding mechanisms. As I said, I will quickly run through some of the chapters. Um, of course, when you look at the funding landscape, okay, uh, in terms of agriculture, agriculture has been the huge recipient of many of the funds. Um, reason being that, I mean, food security issues are becoming climate change issues and they are becoming issues of, of, of forestry. Uh, people are now invading the forest for food. And if you are addressing agriculture matters, you are addressing certainly some forest matters. Um, and that is why we have, um, there's an emergence of a concept of agroforestry. In many, in many of the climate finance instruments, agroforestry has become very prominent. And I'm, I'm urging all the chapters to critically look at some of these denominators agroforestry as a means to alleviating a lot of um, uh, poverty within our communities. Um, it's one instrument where when you pursue it rigorously, you build a proposal around agroforestry. Trust me, there's funding for it. Um, in terms of um, where the money is, I'll try to look at some, some of the five uh, climate change instruments that I, I love so much. Um, in the past, I've followed them rigorously. Some of them have worked under them. Um, you look at the Green Climate Fund. You look at the African Climate Change Fund. You look at the, the Global Environmental um, Facility. Of course, my 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 one of the my favorite areas um, in terms of these grants. It's easy. Uh, it's it's it's, it's methodological. If you have very good in terms of your preparation, you are able to assess some of these funds. And of course, I'll look at the Global Climate Partnership Funds. In terms of the um, Green Climate Fund, of course, there are some, as I did indicated earlier on, is divided into two. Some of them are looking at mitigation, others are looking at adaptation. In terms of mitigation, they are looking at agriculture, um, they are looking at forestry, they are looking at other land use. Um, also, in terms of adaptation, you can look at ecosystem services. Um, you can also look at the ecosystems, general ecosystems, and these funds are available. I mean, in the in the in the last couple of years, I think from 2015, over 20 billion was invested in this fund, and almost about 180 different projects across four regions. 
and some of these regions are East, Eastern Europe, Latin America, Caribbean, Africa, and uh, Asia Pacific, uh, Asian Pacific, sorry. And so these funds are, are readily available. Um, I, will, I will urge members to explore them, go to their website, try to explore some of these funds. And as a foundation and chapters, I expect that we should start exploring some of this. Even if some of the grant require us to partner with larger organizations, please let's take opportunity of these and do some of these. And I know that in, in, the, in the short term, some of these funding may be a challenge, but when you do all the necessary steps that um, we are outlining, try to partner with bigger organizations, try to join allied forces with platforms that are bigger so that you can, you can uh, even if at the end of it, you have just a component of some of these funds to, um, to implement, it will go a long way to help um, the chapters to grow. I will quickly look at other um, funding instruments as there is no time. I'll look at the African Climate Change Fund. Um, I have been very fortunate to have applied for these grants in the past, though I wasn't successful, but I believe that these are funding that we can explore. I mean, it, it's quite easy and the forms are very straightforward. Once you're able to present yourself a concrete plan, trust me, these grants are available and you can easily assess them. Um, I would also look at the, the global environmental facility. And for me, this grant is one of the most interesting and then one of the most direct grants um, that um, I expect all the chapters to explore. I know the, these funding instruments are dotted across our various continents. Let's make good use of it. The focus area is on biodiversity, climate change, mitigation, community-based adaptation, land degradation, sustainable forest management, international waters and chemicals. Look, please let's make good use of some of these funds. They are there. The funds are there. These are dedicated funds. Every year they issue annual program statements. They do smaller calls. Please do apply for some of these grants. Look, trust me, I would always be available to, to give technical support where necessary. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll be learning how to um, sort of develop a good proposal to be able to assess some of these findings. And the Global Climate Change Partnership Fund, these are large grants. Um, if you want to be able to assess some of these grants, um, of course, you need to partner bigger and larger organizations to be able to um, uh, assess some of these trends. I will encourage um, a lot of these chapters to start forming some lot of um, leverages with other existing platforms, as I did indicated. In, in Ghana, we have the Forest Watch Program. In the past, the Forest Watch Program, the Forest Watch Ghana has been a vehicle where other CSOs, other large organizations leverage and supply programs to them. Um, we should have some of these conversations. We should start draining other allied um, platforms in our various countries so that we can start leveraging on potentials within the network. Of course, um, I would want to look at the step to step approaches in terms of uh, trying to develop yourself or trying to develop a chapter um, for funds. First of all, you need to identify um, a problem within the setup. You don't, and that is when um, um, Sheila will be talking about capability statement. What problem is your chapter trying to address? What is very prevailing within your country or what is very prevailing within your region? Identify the problem and, and search for the right funding, okay? And come out with, a sketches of program, a program idea, how you intend to solve that problem. And of course, engage stakeholders to have the, uh, a, pro, uh, a sort of um, a sort of holistic idea how the, the problem in the past has been, I mean, have been approached or how the problem has been solved or tried to be solved in the past. And also um, approach the desired donors. And of course, in the next couple of weeks, I will tell you on donor scheming, how to approach donors how do you start even to talk to donors? I will, I will be talking on some of these uh, foundation matters. And I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks, we can have refined uh, um, projects for ourselves and we can be able to um, apply for grants and have some of these uh, um, chapters running. Um, I wouldn't um, bother you much with some of these assignments. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to a more fruitful training section and hoping to see you physically on, on, on Fridays, um, especially this very Friday, um, when we'll, we'll have our first meeting to discuss uh, pertinent matters of this. Thank you very much.